हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल इंजीनियरिंग एजुकेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल थैंक यू वेलकम टू पावर प्लांट लेक्चर सीरीज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मल्टी स्टेज कंप्रेशन एंड इंटरमीडिएट प्रेशर सो we know that many compressors are more than one compressors are used in applications so compression is performed in stages it is called multi stage compression as we discussed that the volumetric efficiency is 1 minus vc by vs into p2 by v1 power 1 over n minus 1 where vc is the clearance volume of the cylinder and vs is the swept volume so based on this expression if we look to the pressure ratio so by changing the pressure ratio there will be change in the volumetric efficiency so if we increase the pressure ratio the volumetric efficiency decreases and if we reduce this pressure ratio volumetric efficiency increases we will see the effect of pressure ratio on the volumetric efficiency on the pv diagram on the next page <coughs> so how pressure ratio affect the volumetric efficiency so this figure figure 12.12 is about the effect on the volumetric efficiency of in of increasing the delivery pressure so there are cycles cycle a b c d and cycle a b dash c dash d dash then a b double dash c double dash and d double dash so this is the suction of the compression compressor and this is the compression process this is the delivery and this is the re expansion for cycle a b c d the delivery pressure is p2 so the pressure ratio here is p2 by p1 for this cycle a b dash c dash d dash and a we have pressure ratio p3 by p1 similarly for this cycle a b double dash c double dash d double dash we have pressure ratio p4 by p1 so for this less pressure ratio we have high volumetric efficiency value while for this high pressure ratio we have less volumetric efficiency so it is very clear from the diagram that by increasing the pressure ratio volumetric efficiency decreases and if we reduce the pressure ratio so volumetric efficiency increases so using two stage compressor or two stage compression increases the volumetric efficiency and the pv diagram for this compression process for two stage compression is shown over here in figure 12.13 this is the first stage process this is the suction of the compressor compression heliotropic compression delivery and re expansion of some gas or air these two processes compression and re expansion are heliotropic pv power n is equal to constant where again in second stage these processes compression and re expansion are again heliotropic processes and a double dash b double dash c dash d dash this is the second stage 
processes. This is the delivery, this is the suction, this is the compression, this is the delivery and this is the re-expansion. So here simple two stages compression is shown on this PV diagram. If we include intercooling in the process, if we use intercooler in between the stages, so for that we can show these processes on PV diagram like this and this is the effect of intercooling on compression work. This is the first stage processes and these are the second stage processes. In second stage we note that A double dash, B double dash, B dash and A dash. This is the intercooling work on the PV diagram. So this work is reduced on the second compressor. So less work is required to for the second stage and that is A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash. So due to intercooling work in second stage is reduced. This is the plan showing intercooling between compressor stages in figure 12.15. On the right left side first are low pressure stage or cycle A, B, C, D <coughs> as shown on the PV diagram. This is the low pressure stage or this cylinder is called low pressure cylinder. This is the intercooler and this is the second or high pressure stage cycle A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash as shown on the PV diagram over here. The intercooler used in this compressor stages is water cooled intercooler. So here water ends and here water out. This is the flow of the air. So compressed air from stage 1 is transferred to stage 2 through intercooler. We pass that compressed air through intercooler and introduce it to high pressure stage. So if intercooling is complete, so in that case the TH diagram for complete intercooling and after cooling is shown over here. This process from suppose this is 1 and this is 2. This is compression in stage 1. Suppose this point is 3. 2 to 3 is the complete intercooling process. 3 to 4 is again compression in the second stage. And from 4 to 5, suppose this is the after cooling. Sometimes after cooling is also used after high pressure stage to cool the air and reduce its temperature. The delivery temperature from the two stages is calculated from this expression. So this is Ti temperature, intermediate temperature after stage 1 and it is equal to T1 into Ti by P1 power n minus 1 by n and we calculate the delivery temperature from stage 2 that is T2 equal to T1 into P2 by P1 power n minus 1 by n. So we can calculate T2 from this expression for the high pressure stage. To understand the multi-stage compression in deep, we try this example, example 12.6. In this example, single acting two-stage reciprocating air compressor is used, which 4.5 kg of air per minute is compressed from 1.013 bar to 15 degree C, a pressure ratio from 9 to 1. 
both stages have the same pressure ratio and the law of compression and expansion in both stages is PV power 1.3 is equal to constant. If a cooling is complete, calculate the indicated power and cylinder swift volumes required. Assume that the clearance volume of both stages is 5% of their respective swift volumes and the compressor runs at 300 revolution per minute. So first of all we extract the given data that is we have given the mass flow rate 4.5 kg per minute. Second pressure is given that is P is equal to 1.013 bar and temperature is given that is 15 degrees centigrade. If we show these temperatures and pressures here, so we have pressure ratio P2 by P1 overall pressure ratio 9 by 1. In polytropic index is 1.3 and clearance volume is 5% of the swift volume where the compressor speed is 300 revolution per minute. So for that we have to use first of all to draw the PV diagram that is AB CD for first stage and for second stage it is A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash. So first of all we have to calculate this intermediate pressure from the pressure ratio given. We know that Pi by P1 the pressure ratio in first stage will be equal to the pressure ratio in the second stage P2 by Pi. So from here we can calculate very easily that Pi square is equal to square root of P1 and P2, the product of P1 and P2 square root. So by simplifying this we get the pressure ratio 3. To find the intermediate temperature in between the stages using the expression Ti is equal to T1 into Pi by P1 n minus 1 by n. Here Ti is unknown, remaining values are known. So we find Ti and it comes out 371 kelvin. Now using the indicated power expression, we have two stages for that. We will multiply 2 with the given indicated power expression which is n by n minus 1 m dot r ti minus t1. So n is given, m dot is given 4.5 kilogram per minute converting it to kilogram per second we divide it by 60 and ti is 371 kil1 where t1 is 2 double 8. So we get the total indicated power for both stages and it is 15.5 kilowatt. Similarly, to find the swift volumes of the cylinders LPC, low pressure uh, cylinder and HPC, high pressure cylinder, for that we have to first find the mass induced per cycle. So mass induced per cycle is m dot by n. We calculated from this simple expression m dot is 4.5 kg per minute and the speed of the compressor is 300 revolution per minute. So m is calculated from here. So the volume induced can be calculated by using the characteristic equation of state which is V equal to m r t1 by p1 where the induced volume is the difference of V a and V d. So V a minus V d is calculated from here and it comes out 0.0122 cubic meter per cycle. 
this is the expression for the volumetric efficiency Va minus Vd over Vs. The general expression is here. So putting the values in this expression, we get the value of volumetric efficiency equal to 0.934. Now using this simple volumetric efficiency expression and rearranging it for swift volume, we get Va minus Vd over volumetric efficiency. So dividing it with volumetric efficiency, we get the value 0.0131 cubic meter per cycle. So this is the swift volume for low pressure cylinder. Now to find the swift volume for the high pressure cylinder, for that first we have to find the Pi, intermediate pressure. So we know that Pi by P1 is equal to 3. So to calculate Pi, we will multiply 3 with P1 pressure and P1 is given which is 1.013 bar. So it comes out 3.039 bar. Now to find the volume drawn per cycle again using the characteristic equation of state which is V is equal to MRT by P and in this case P is Pi. M is calculated that is 0 0.015, R is 287 joule per kilogram per kilowatt and temperature T1 is 288 kilowatt and converting it to Pascal divided by rest to power 5 we get the value 0 0.00406. So this is the volume drawn. Now again the volumetric efficiency value is same as in first case because all pressure ratios are same P2 by Pi is equal to Pi by P1 so in this case the volumetric efficiency value is also 0 0.934 so to get the swift volume of the high pressure stage or high pressure cylinder we will divide the volume drawn by volumetric efficiency so we get the value of swift volume for a high pressure cylinder that comes out 0 0.0436. We have noted that the clearance ratio is the same in each cylinder and the suction temperatures are the same since the intercooling is complete therefore the swift volumes are in the ratio of suction pressures. So we can also calculate the high pressure swift volume high pressure cylinder swift volume like this dividing it by 3 the swift volume of the LPC low pressure cylinder we get the value of VSH which is the swift volume of the high pressure cylinder and it is same just like this as calculated previously. Now the ideal intermediate pressure so the value for intermediate pressure PI influences the work to be done on the gas and its distribution between the stages. The value of PI is very much uh, important because it affects the work of the compressor. So the condition for the work done to be minimum uh, will be proved for two stage compression but it can be extended to any number of stages. So for two stage we have total work low pressure stage and high pressure stage work. For one stage we have the expression n by n minus 1 m dot r t1 into p i by p1 into n minus 1 by n minus 1 and for second stage we have n by n minus 1 m dot r t1 into p2 by p i power n minus 1 by n minus 1. So for two stage total work or total power this is the total power will be we will common this these factors and the remaining terms will be sum so to find the optimum value of pi for that we will differentiate this total power expression with respect to for so differentiating it with respect to Pi, we get 
this expression so applying the derivative on this expression and finally simplifying the values we get this expression so pi square is equal to p1 into p2 so in this case the pressure ratio is the same for each stage so the total minimum power will be equal to 2 into power required for one stage so 2 into n m dot r t1 by n minus 1 into p i by p1 power n minus 1 by n minus 1 so this is the total minimum power as the pressure ratios are same so this expression is this expression is achieved from the by simplifying the previous expression which is shown over here from equation 12.19 so we can also express these ratio in terms of overall pressure ratio so pi by, by p1 can be also written equal to p1 by p1 into p2 square root by p1 so the pressure ratio pi by p1 can be written also like this for overall pressure ratio which is p2 by p1 so now replacing this pi by p1 with p2 by p1 in the above expression so we get this here the difference is only we have 2 over here again because this is expressed in overall pressure ratio so this square root is nothing but it equals to 1 over 2 and it be it will be there so for any number of stages suppose we have z number of stages in the compressor so for that the general expression for total minimum power will be equal to z into n minus n minus 1 m dot r t1 into p2 by p1 power n minus 1 by z n minus 1 so this is the general expression to find the total minimum power for the stages so the pressure ratio again for each stage will be equal to p2 by p1 power 1 over z so number of stages z will be replaced accordingly example 12.7 is about three stage compressor three stage single acting air compressor running in an atmosphere at 1.013 bar and 15 degrees c has a free air delivery of 2.83 cubic meter per minute the suction pressure and temperature are 0.98 bar and 32 degrees c respectively calculate the indicated power assuming complete intercooling while a is 1.3 and that the machine is designed for minimum work so the delivery pressure is 70 bar so according to the given data first we will find the mass delivered using the characteristic equation of state dv by rt pressure is given 1.013 v is given 2.83 cubic meter per minute R is 287, T, T is 288 kilo. So the mass delivered comes out 3.47 kilogram per minute. Now to find the indicated power, we have the expression for multiple stages, which is three-stage compressor. So Z n by n minus one using the above 12.22 expression. Here all values are known. N is 1.3 z number of stages is 3 m dot is 3.47 kilogram per minute is calculated divided by 60 to convert it into kilogram per second similarly to convert the value and calculate it in kilowatt 
we use the R value 0.287 kilojoule per kilogram per kilowatt. P2 is 70 bar and P1 the induction pressure is 0.98 bar. And again number of stages is 3. So simplifying this we get the total indicated power which is 24.2 kilowatt. So this is all about the multi-stage compression and the intermediate pressure that how can we find indicated total minimum power for multiple stages. Thanks for watching. Please like and comment on my videos. Also subscribe my channel to get new videos.